All right, so let's get started. We're going to start lying down in Supta Baddha Konasana, feet together, knees out to the side. <sighs> Just lying flat, though, if you really want to have that block under your shoulders, you could go ahead and do that. All right, I'm getting settled in there. If you want to start sitting for a moment, which as you probably know, I like to do just a little squinging around. And then as you're ready, making your way down to the floor. Oh. Getting that back of the pelvis nice and level on the floor, balancing the right and the left sides. And feeling a gentle drawing up through the core, heavy belly to the lower back toward the floor. And then you can have the arms wherever you like, hands on the belly alongside, maybe up overhead. And we will find our breath. So first, just feeling your breath. See if you can just notice it without changing it, which is actually rather difficult. And then slowly easing that breath out a little longer and deeper. Feeling more like you are getting out of the way. You are taking a step back and drawing the breath with you, with you rather than that you're pushing it to be longer. Maybe noticing all these little subtle physical shifts that happen in the body as something lets go here, as something settles a little more into place there. And then really feeling your feet, the soles of the feet pressing together, the outer edges of the feet on the floor, and then kind of especially that outer heel. And then bringing the arms down alongside, palms into the floor, wide across the collarbones, and we will lift that pelvis up off the floor. So just lift like maybe three or four inches off the floor. And reach the sitting bones for the opposite wall. Keep pulling those knees wide. So, it's, so you're just a little off the floor. You still have very much a flat and long feeling. And then pressing up a little more, letting the knees come up and keep those outer edges of the feet on the floor. Feeling a little bit more lift, a little bit more bridge pose like. And then let's lengthen back to that, just hovering a few inches off the floor, pull the knees wide again. And then coming back down to the floor. Ah, oh, taking a breath just in case there's a little tension in the face there. That's where I like to feel it when I'm doing bridge poses. My jaw often gets a little tight. 
All right, let's do that again. So first, the smaller lift up, reaching long through the sitting bones, still feeling long and wide and flat, more or less. And then lifting up higher, it's pretty much your ankle joint that's going to limit your range of motion here, how much that outer ankle can stretch as you press up a little more, the knees will lift up a little. And then lengthening down just above the floor again, pulling those knees wide a little more, press down of the outer knee. And then back down to the floor. Nice big exhale out the mouth, letting go. And then sliding those legs out to straighten, reach through the heels. And we'll bend the right leg in, pulling the right thigh to the chest, reaching long and flat through the top of the left leg. And then lifting the head and the shoulders, lift that left leg a few inches off the floor, really press down in the center of the body. We'll hold this a couple breaths. And then reach through the left leg, stretching it up to the ceiling as much as it will go. And reaching that left leg long and back down to the floor, bringing the head and the shoulders down. Extending the right leg out, and we'll bend the left leg in. Holding the left leg in, being long and flat against the floor for a couple breaths, reaching long through the top of the right. And then rounding up with the upper body, lifting that right leg a few inches off the floor and we really press down in the center, belly to the spine, to the floor. And then reaching longer through that right leg, pulling it up to the ceiling, any amount, holding here a couple breaths. And then reaching long and down, right leg back to the floor, bringing the upper body down, straighten out the left leg, and stretching the arms up over. Maybe a little circling of the wrists and the ankles. A little squinging. And then we'll bend the knees, rolling to the side or rolling straight up and coming to Sukhasana, the cross legs. Ah. And then, as usual, lengthening up, using those arms, shifting, squinging. And slowly release with the arms, feeling that long and spacious spine against the wall behind you. Hands resting on the knees. And bringing your attention to that wave of the breath again. Lengthening it out, smoothing it out.
And then let's reach out wide through the collarbones, through the fingertips. And we'll breathe the arms up over. And let's interlock the fingers, turning the palms up to the ceiling, extending those arms up, rounding the shoulder blades down, finding the balance between those two. Give a little squeeze in of the upper arms toward the ears. That might extend the arms just a little more. And then let's take a side bend toward the left here so that we're stretching our right side. I'll be the mirror. Lengthening out that right side, feeling the left side coming up and under for a little bit of support. Lengthening back up to the center, maybe a little refresh in the arms, changing the cross of the fingers. And then we'll go over to the right, stretching out the left side. Lengthen up, reaching up and over. Feeling that right side coming up to support the left side. Just like how the back of the body supports the front of the body in the back. And then lengthening up, evening out those two sides again. And we'll release the hands, bringing the arms down, changing the cross of the legs. And we will come forward, reaching out and over, breathing across the back of the body. Nice big round breaths, expanding the sides, expanding the front and the back. And coming up, unfurling that spine back up on top of the sitting bones. Deep breath, letting all of that settle. And then let's come around onto all fours. We'll do a few cats and cows. So you can move a little forward and back if you like with that. And then finishing with that, we'll tuck those toes under feet hip distance or maybe extra wide out toward the outer edge of the mat as we expand up into downward facing dog. Ah, breathing into the back of the legs there. And walking the dog, bending one knee, sinking into the opposite heel or anything else you want to do. And then we will find the best downward facing dog you can do at this moment. Nothing moving but the breath. Feeling those nice strong arms from the interlocked fingers. Same sort of work there. 
Then we're going to make our way onto our belly on the floor. So you can sit back in child's pose and just come forward to the space, option number one, or we'll do Asta Namaskar, knees, chest, chin. So if you're doing the knees, chest, chin, bringing the feet into parallel, coming forward to the plank, setting the knees down on all fours, big cow back, hinging back, let the elbows soften, and then pull the upper chest forward, shoulders about over the fingertips, bringing that upper chest down, lift even more in that crease of the hip joint, see if you can arch a little more, and then sliding out to the small cobra, and then we'll all be meeting up in the space, bringing the arms forward, elbows under the shoulders, reaching out through the fingertips, pulling yourself forward and up, reaching back through the legs. And then really slowly, we're going to bend the knees. So press that tailbone down a little more, reach through the toes, and slowly bending the knees, maybe flexing the feet along the way, reaching the upper back for the heels. Give a little squeeze tighter like you're squeezing a big fitness ball on your back. And then slowly extending those legs out. Maybe the upper back lifts a little, the elbows come across off the floor as the legs extend. And then we'll do that once more, letting the elbows float back down if they came up as we slowly bend the legs. And then give that big fitness ball on your back a squeeze for a moment. And slowly extend the legs out again. Maybe those feet pull the upper back back with them and the elbows float up a little, or maybe not. Don't force that. And then calming down, letting the forehead rest on the hands for a moment. Feeling back up. Let's take a couple cats and cows on the way. We can get that cat back, especially up in the upward back as well. And then down, we're facing dog. And we'll go through a vinyasa or not, any version you want. So I'm going to do the kneeling plank version. If you want to come along with me as we move forward to the plank. And then set the knees down, kneeling plank. And then pull those elbows back, upper arms come alongside the rib cage and kneeling chaturanga. And then upward facing dog, maybe lifting the knees up. And downward facing dog. And looking between the hands to jump or step forward. Into the concave back, halfway up, folding over. Couple breaths here in the forward bend, nice strong legs. And then we'll step the feet out to the edge of the mat. Rotate them out a little, coming down in wide malasana. So if you can, hands to namaste, elbows wedged inside. You can always keep the hands on the floor if needed. Feeling a lift up as if you're about to straighten up. And then we'll bring those hips up parallel to the floor, fingertips on the floor, trying to make a long flat spine. If you're feeling especially strong, maybe you're reaching the arms forward. And 
and then straightening the legs. So we still have outer rotation as they straighten up. Turning the feet back to parallel. So we have wide leg parallel, but not too wide, not as wide as the Prasarita. And then from here, coming up to standing, big front body, yawn. Ah. And then we'll take those arms around. We're coming to the horseback rider. So that's like wide um, chair pose. But then we try to go a little bit flatter with the upper body, a little bit more of a flat back. Pulling those sitting bones back. Strong core lifting up into the spine. Release those arms to the floor, turn the heels in, toes out, back to wide malasana. So let's do that again a little less lingeringly. We'll do it twice through, but not quite so lingeringly as we did at that time. Wide malasana. And coming up, hips parallel to the floor, fingertips on the floor, maybe a reach. Straightening up the legs to the forward bend without a rotation. Turning the feet to parallel. Coming up to standing with our wide stance into a big front body yawn. Reaching the arms around, coming into the horseback rider a little bit flatter and longer chair pose. And then turn the heels and toes out back to wide malasana. Once more. Coming up parallel to the floor. Fingertips on the floor, maybe a reach. Straightening the legs into the forward bend. Turning the feet to parallel. Coming up to standing into the front body yawn. And a big circle around horseback rider. And then turning the feet out again into the wide mollusk. And then let's straighten up, walking the feet back in together, hip distance apart or right together, Uttanasana, the forward bend. Oh. And let's come up to standing here. Big front body on. And we'll come around to Namaste this time. Bringing those arms down, hands to Namaste. Long and flat against the wall behind you. Breathing. Finding your breath again. And then let's release the hands. And interlock the fingers behind, rolling the shoulders out, lengthen up the front of the body to lift the chest, to lift the chin, and coming over, pressing out through the hands. And release the hands. Concave back halfway up, folding over. And let's step back with the left leg so that we have the right lunge. And we will come up in the high lunge. And then coming down, reaching the left hand down, right arm up, so we come down in the twist. And reaching that right arm down, stepping forward. 
Little concave back, we'll do the same thing on the left, folding over, stepping back with the right leg, coming up in the high lunge. Nice big round breaths. And then making your way down in the twist. Left arm reaches up, right reaches down into the twist. And bringing that left arm down, stepping forward into the concave back, folding over, and then jumping or stepping back through the vinyasa or not. Downward facing dog. And so if you're going along with me, here we are in the plank. And knees down in kneeling plank. Bending the elbows, squeezing them tight alongside that rib cage. And then upward facing dog, maybe lifting the knees. And downward facing dog. <sighs> And let's lift the right leg up, reaching long through the heel. Couple breaths in our three-legged dog, stretching everything out. And through to the lunge, and then we'll bring that left knee down, coming up in the jayasana. Inhaling up the front, exhale, pouring down the back. And then suspending that weight between the back knee and the front heel, feeling like the right heel is pulling back, the left knee is pulling a little forward, making that strength pulling into the center and up through the fingertips. And then bringing the arms down, we're going to the seated goddess, turning the right foot in 45 degrees, swivel on the left knee, bringing the shin down to a diagonal, and then we sit on the left heel, maybe holding on with the hands on the floor. You can also sit back behind your left heel onto the floor, wedge that right arm inside the leg. So it's kind of like half wide malasana. Lifting through the top of the head, trying not to implode into the floor. And then extend the arms, we make a little twist to the left. Big reach around with the left arm back to Namaste. Swiveling back to the lunge and stepping back to the plank through whatever version of the vinyasa, downward facing dog. So I'm just turning around so I come out facing you on the left. Deep breath and downward facing dog. And then we'll do the left, lifting the left leg up. And taking a few breaths here, everything stretching and extending. Are those elbows nice and straight and strong? And then through to the lunge. And we'll bring the right knee down, coming up in the jayasana, the kneeling lunge. And then we don't want to be just hanging here. We're lifting the abdominal muscles and feeling like you're balanced between the left heel and the right knee, not just kind of hanging there. Pulling the left knee back and the right knee forward a little bit. And then bringing the arms down, seated goddess, turning the left toes in, swivel on that right leg. 
And you can sit on the heel, you can sit behind the heel on the floor. You can keep your hands here on the floor or getting them in namaste and really wedge that left arm into the left leg. That's partly what's supporting you here, that connection and push there. Lifting through the top of the head. And then expanding the arms, making a little twist to the right. Lengthen through the top of the head even more. And bringing that right arm around, hands to namaste again, take a breath. And then swiveling back to the lunge. And stepping back to the plank through the vinyasa or not. Any version. So I'm just going to stick with this kneeling plank version today. Downward facing dog. Three deep breaths here. Or you could be in child's pose. Oh, I need to do my turn around again. All right, let's lift that right leg up, reaching long through the heel. And we'll go to dog at the high fire hydrant, bending the knee, opening that hip. And we'll draw a circle with that right knee. Try not to come out of your downward facing dog. So as the knee comes forward, I'm pressing back more in that left leg. And then out to the side and up and over. Let's do that twice more. And then we'll let that knee come forward into the lunge and the warrior two. Grounding that left foot down, big reach out with the left arm coming up in the warrior to the lateral lunge. And then making sure everything arrived, tracking the knee over the foot, inner thigh to inner knee to center of the foot, reaching long and back through that left leg, pulling wide, also pulling those sitting bones down. Let's straighten the right leg. Can you straighten from the hip first and then pull the knee up, bringing both arms up overhead. That feeling of dragging the feet together here for a little bit more strength in the center. Then we're going out to the side angle with the bent knee. Big inhale and exhale, reaching everything wide, maybe just the elbow to the knee. And then that left arm comes over the ear. Do a little twisting left so you don't collapse toward the floor. And then let's do that twice more. So straightening up, but try to lift from the hip, from the core. Both arms come up overhead. Big inhale and exhale, reaching out to the side angle. Taking a breath or two here. And then once more, coming up. Big lift. And out to the side angle, Parsvakonasana. Try not to let that left side collapse toward the floor. And then we'll stay. Just a few more breaths. Now the hard part, we're coming back up, straightening up that right leg, both arms up overhead. Lift yourself a little more to turn both feet to parallel forward and 
and we'll interlock the fingers behind, lengthen up to lift the chest, to lift the chin, and coming over, pressing out through the hands and hinging over. Ah. So taking a few more breaths with the fingers interlocked, though if you need to release the hands to the floor sooner, go ahead. And then we'll all release the hands, bringing the hands to the floor, pressing down a little, taking some weight there through the arms so you can really extend the legs. And then letting yourself pour back over. And one more deep breath here. And then walking back around to our right lunge where we came from, stepping back to the plank through the vinyasa downward facing dog. I'm turning around yet again. All right, all of that around on the left. And lifting the left leg up. Dog at the high fire hydrant, opening up that left hip. Nice strong arms, nice strong right leg as we draw those circles. So left knee and thigh drop down and forward, which means that right hip especially has to go up and back a little more. And then out to the parallel side and up and over and twice more around. And then we'll let that left leg swing all the way through to the lunge. Coming up in the warrior two on the left. Checking your alignment once you arrive. So you want approximately heel to the arch or heel to heel this way. And the most important thing is probably that knee tracking over the foot and not falling inside past the big toe. Reaching wide and flat. And also there's a little draw down with the sitting bones. And breathing, how's the breathing? All right, here we go. Straightening up the left leg. See if you can lift from underneath from the gluteus maximus from the core. And then that knee pulls up with the front thigh. Feeling like you're dragging those feet together and then out to the side angle. Big inhale and exhale, reaching out, left arm lands on the leg or maybe on the floor already if you're ready. And bringing the right arm over the ear. Try not to collapse down, a little feeling of twisting right. And then let's straighten up again, trying to find the strength from the center there. And side angle, big reach out. Couple breaths here. And then doing that once more. And side angle. And then we'll breathe and hold, deepening into the pose. Good. 
Keep that right shoulder lifting up and open. So we want that right side resting up feeling, helping us as opposed to pulling down to the floor. All right, here we go. Coming back up once more. Inhale and ex. Whoops, hail. <laughs> and then turn and feet to parallel. Interlocking the fingers behind, rolling the shoulders out, lifting up the front of the chest to lift the chin. You pull that tailbone down toward the floor a little more. And then come forward. And we'll keep those hands interlocked for a few breaths. So if you need to release them sooner, go ahead. And then release the hands. Give you a little press down into the floor so those legs can get a little extra extend without so much weight on them. And then pour it over. And then let's lengthen out Coming to a flat back or close enough there with the fingertips on the floor, but doing the strength through the core, through the torso as well. And then let's see, I'm going to continue doing my real right and left and not the mirror, but it won't matter because we're doing each side. So let's take a twist to the right. That should be your, what was your back leg toward the back of the mat. Left hand in the center, twisting to the right. So trying to feel long and flat through the top of the head as we start reaching up through that right arm. Lots of reaching out and expanding. And then a little bend in the left knee. Now you can start trying to pull that left shoulder down toward the floor, coming over a little more, still really reaching up through the right arm now. And then letting all that go, coming back to the center. Deep breath. Finding that long flat spine will twist to the left. Right hand in the center, twisting left. So going for the lengthening, the lifting, the spaciousness at first here. Strong core, pull those abdominal muscles in, lengthen through the top of the head, reaching up through that left arm. And then a little bend in that right knee, letting that right shoulder sink down a little more. But still lifting up, trying not to implode. And then back to the center. Ah. Oh. And then walking the hands out in front of your body as far as you can. Maybe you can even walk out so you're in a really strange sort of downward facing dog. And then walking back to those feet. And we will turn back to the left lunge, which is where we started the front of the mat. Stepping back to the play through the vinyasa. 
any version. And downward facing dog. Deep breath there. And then coming down, sitting back in child's pose. If you're like me, really maybe enjoying the bending of the knees there. Oh, surrendering to gravity. Inhale and exhale. Stay very present in this easefulness. Don't space out and exit. And let's slide forward onto the stomach there, into the sphinx. Pulling yourself forward and up, reaching long back through the legs. And a couple nice big circles of breath up the front, down the back here. Adjusting the effort and ease for yourself. I find sometimes if I give myself permission not to work so hard, then the next thing you know, I am working so hard, but it doesn't have that same like pushing effort that it does sometimes. And let's do that slow motion bend of the legs again. And bending the legs slowly, feeling the heels and the upper back reaching toward each other. A little squeeze of that imaginary ball on your back. And then extending the legs out again. Maybe the upper body lifts a little and the elbows lift or not. And coming down. And then we'll go to the bow pose. Oh, I'm sorry, Salabhasana first. Interlock the fingers, roll the shoulders out. Long and flat against the floor, and then lengthen to lift. Squeeze those upper arms toward each other. And then keep those upper arms working as you release the hands slowly, turning the palms to the ceiling. Salavasana, the locust pose. And then we're going to hold this and slowly bend the legs. So it might flatten you out to bend the legs, but pretend you're rounding more and squeezing that imaginary fitness ball. And then straighten the legs out again. So maybe you're on the floor, but still lengthen. And then coming down. And then let's bring the hands out wide across from the shoulders, standing on the pads of the fingers if you can, or you can use the flat hand. And we'll ripple up in that giant bug cobra. So stick the elbows out and up and tuck the chin and round up from the upper back. And then coming down, arching the back. So let's do it that way again with a nice good round. And extend on the way down and twice more. And 
and then just landing on the floor, let the forehead rest on the hands for a couple breaths. And peeling ourselves up off the floor, let's come down to the floor. Oh. Yeah. We will drop the knees one side and then the other. So you can just keep the legs parallel here or maybe crossing them over. So if you're going to cross over, we cross the right thigh over the left. So I'm doing the thigh to thigh, different than the figure four, like the eagle pose or the cow face. So give those legs a little squeeze. Arms out to the side at shoulder height and drop the legs over to the left. So when you cross the right leg over the top, you take the legs left. Big inhale and exhale. How much can you surrender to gravity? And then coming back to the center and switching sides. Dropping the knees over to the right or the other side. And inhale and exhale, letting go. And coming back to the center, disentangle the legs, sliding them out to straight. Ah. Ah. And into Shavasana. And inhale and exhale, sinking. Feeling every moment of every breath. Letting time expand using your attention and presence.
And then breathing back into your body, into this room. Moving the fingers and toes, maybe circling the wrists and the ankles. Stretching those arms overhead. And then bending the knees, making your way gently up to sitting and sitting in any comfortable position with that long and spacious spine. Taking a few more moments, sitting quietly inside yourself. Namaste. Thank you for coming. Ah, so let me push this.